Howdy folks, this is Vernon here. This is um, my review for the Puerto Rico that's coming out soon. Sorry for the delay. I have been um, busy really reading in depth about this whole review. So I have to admit, um, I've got some mixed vibes, mixed opinions, mixed everything all together. And I want to start off with saying uh, Merry Christmas to all my friends and viewers out there. Um, also, I wish you well for 2020 that's coming out. Um, I hope everything will be a good year for us all. Now, okay. Anyway, the Puerto Rico dock is pretty awesome, okay? It actually shows you what you need to do was pre-required uh, pre for the whole thing. The opening cinematic for showing the cranes, the, the sheds, the trains, the vehicles and that is actually pretty awesome to begin with. Um, so, you know what? Um, let's just go with the flow. I think it's awesome. Okay, so it's great to see with everything is in there. Um, however, just like all things, I've been looking forward to the Puerto Rico for such a long time. It's a, a lovely American uh, 210 warship. It is definitely a mind-boggling experience for anyone out there. And I have to say that this is not looking good news, okay? I'm sitting there going like, you know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Okay? I do not know what to do. <coughs> because my first reaction when I heard about it, it was going to be great. A T Den cruiser, a premium warship. It's going to be great on the battlefield. It's going to look good on you, and everyone's going to have fun and enjoyable time with it and whatnot. And I believe that Wargaming have listened to its viewers uh, to have something brand new and playable in the field, which is, you know, I have to give them a lot of thumbs up for that, but after what I've heard from the live stream, after what I have read on the forums, and after what I have heard from some reviews, wow. In the last 48 hours, I have never seen a, a very mixed review, and I have to admit, I'm with them. Because, uh, let me just start off with saying that when I first uh, saw these changes uh, going on, I n was not expecting major ones and it blew my mind away. Like for example, um, it came down to um, how, you, how as a gamer plays on the game. Now for example, on average, people, I mean, like, you have to ask yourself, on average, how many hours a day do you play the game? I mean, like, when you work in there, everything like that. Uh, do you sit down there and play, like, you know, 24-7? Or do you sit there play at least, you know, maybe a good couple hours at a time and then call quits? Or do you really, um, play a full-on hardcore on the weekend? Now, for example, I know there are people out there who do play full and hardcore on a weekend, for example, uh, at least, you know, more than six hours um, a day, and they do it any time they wish. For me, I just play the game casually, just enjoy it for fun. Alright? That's just me. But when I found out recently about the whole situation, I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. Um, I sat down there thinking, you know what, this is ridiculous. So, I've done some thinking and at first I was livid about the changes last minute changes and all this um, things were said on the um, presentation spreadsheet <laughs> this spreadsheet 
<coughs> they need to stop relying on the spreadsheet on the, in terms of presentations, okay? They really need to stop that um, because they need to explain uh, things properly about what the whole purpose of the uh, Puerto Rico is all about, okay? It wasn't clearly explained, it was left, it was basically not clearly defined what's going on. I've decided that, you know, it is time to just go with the flow and uh, wait for an apology to come out. The apology that came from Wargaming, I just felt next again because it's from a, not only from a corporate standpoint, but also from uh, they're trying to make it, you know, like this. They didn't really think it through to the play base. Now, I have to say, this is the second time they've done it, but not, uh, uh, not, uh, not, uh, not majorly like this. Um, when they took the research bureau, that was the first one. Um, the second time they did this year was this, the Puerto Rico. But in past history, Wargaming has done it for um, the Missouri, the Mont the Missouri, the Constat. Uh, even they have done it for other warships that they have tweaked and changed so many times over the years, um, just before you know the actual release of the ship. And you know, like when it comes down to any warship that's been tweaked by Wargaming, you sit down and go like, "Come on, guys! I know you can do better than this." It's like you know, are you listening to us or? Or have we hit uh, like a brick wall? Um, that's what I'm trying to say. So, let me just start with um, showing you something that I've read. And I'll get you a better idea. Alright, so... This is something that I have been reading up um, on recently. And I was a bit disappointed about what I was seeing, okay? So, I have to admit, I, I never felt so gutted in my life um, when I saw this going on. So, alright. So, let me just show you. Okay, so... Okay. This is what um, has been outlined for getting the Puerto Rico. It sounds good. Don't get me wrong, it sounds good. But it just, you know, like we just need to be clear on this. Alright. So, 48,000 base XP is not hard to do. Um, 90 ship kills is not hard to do. Um, in terms of 4.5 million damage uh, it's it really depends how well you do when you have warships I mean in cruisers and battleships you tend to do more damage output than destroyers or carriers and you actually find it that you probably can do at least you know um, a few good matches in there uh, about the good 12 hours gameplay I'm just putting a fair out of my estimation um, they say 11.25, I say 12 hours. But 9.3 million damage against enemy warships. In a good game, you get 100,000 damage. In a really good game, 200,000 damage. And if you did exceptionally well, 300,000 damage or better. Now, let me just say that it's very rare that you do see people hit above the 200,000 mark. But... On average, I have seen people hit around 100,000 mark, but if you're not doing that bad, good, um, and being close to that, um, you have to revise on where you have to hit the enemy uh, citadels, put flame fire on them, um, torpedo damage, um, destroy the air guns and infestations and things like that. Find, uh, find out the way to really you know, score some devastating hits. Uh, on the targets, and you actually will get good kills. I have proved that in Ohio by getting 69,000 damage um, on the um, by blowing up four citadels and destroying a midway carrier. That was actually fantastic. 
Um, un unexpected, but fantastic. Now, here's something that uh, I, I was really concerned about. 950,000 XP. Where the hell was this mentioned? Because, like, I don't remember seeing that. Um, I have to know what the heck what I just read there. You know, like, remember when you had an entire ship line is run by a million XP, thereabouts. They said 900,000 XP, but a million XP is a fair estimate. Fully stacked with modifiers, you, you get, you know, 10,000 uh, XP on the win. Um, with loss, you get half of that. 95 matches, at least 24 hours. Technically, that's right because you know um, it can be stretched to two days. You know, as an average gamer can do it in about three days at least. Okay, um, three or four days at least for an average gamer for doing at least you know four hours um, a day. But you know, like just by looking at that, um, that's just like you know unreal. That's with the um, XP flag bonuses and everything. Uh, that you have there, so just take it into consideration. Then it's asking you 1.1 million XP for an entire ship line and then some or three similar to the USS Puerto Rico. The USS Alaska for 1 million XP. Yep, for uh, another 24 hours. Unreal. <coughs> Unreal. Just absolute unreal. Um, you know, I just cannot believe it myself. And you know what? Uh, 47 million potential damage. Well, it sounds like insane. It does. But it's doable. It's been five days. It's according to their estimates, but you know, like um, the way I see it, you can probably stretch it out in two weeks um, for you to do it. But you know, like the trouble is, though, um, it's after cruises, so you have to do forty-seven million damage in cruises. If you don't have many cruises in in your ship line, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. Um, and just by looking at that, damn, that's a lot of work, again. And then you look at the, um, 350,000 XP, uh, for six missions, uh, for 48 hours, that's, wow, mind-boggling, give it a chance, so it's 72 hours. And then you got 580,000 X Commander XP, okay, okay. Oh boy. So, you know, in all honesty, I could have, you know, done something a lot better than that. I'll tell you what I would have done. I would have forked out two to four hundred Australian dollars, which is roughly between two fifty to three hundred US dollars, and buy this ship outright. If I was really, 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 and really, really, really wanted this unique warship. But I'll tell you what, it's not worth it on the, the price. I'll tell you what's worth it. 100 bucks for a standard tier 9 warship that it is out there these days. Now for the Alaska, the Georgia, the John Bard, and even, um, you know, whatever... Worship to here they added in that tier. Now in all honesty I think a hundred bucks is worth a lot more of value than maybe spending two three hundred dollars <laughs> or four hundred dollars in a jokingly way on one warship. Because I can tell you this now, uh, two years ago I bought the Amada's pack around about three four hundred bucks. And that consisted of about forty two warships. All premium warships from tiers one to ten, and whatever they were at the time, and that back then, it was an absolute awesome set. 
Um, I didn't get the Missouri or the Crunch Time but, at that pack, but I will say this much. Whatever T Washington got from it, damn, I was impressed. But I didn't whinge about it. Because it's value for money. Value for money, I'll talk about the, uh, the Puerto Rico. What's value for money for the Puerto Rico? Well, for a free play to play game like this, I can see it's good to play and grind and have fun with your friends. Sure. But, the mind-boggling stats I'm seeing of what is required for these warships is absolutely mind-blowing. Some say they can achieve it, and there's no problem. Uh, you know, when when they apologize about it and they said it to a bear and things like that, um, I find it laughable when they extended that it will be done in for a whole month. Um, you know, to point out that you, they should give the Puerto Rico a chance to start from early December until end of February, just for argument's sake, so that they will get the job done right. You know what? I mean, like I am, I am that that surprised about what was going on. And yes, I know, and I have to admit, as a person who is done it by, you know, done it intentionally um, to look, make it look like that this is a money-grabbing warship. I felt like belting my head in a wall. I really do. Because this is supposed to be the season to be jolly, the season to have fun with your friends, to share the spirit of Christmas. Not only that, to enjoy the spirit of war game. I Gosh, I cannot believe what I'm thinking about it. You know, um, I just think that this warship is a joke, a real joke, if they expect us to fork out, you know, like, um, four weeks of hardcore gaming and not working and not doing anything with family and friends. That's basically, there. There, it feels like, they're asking you to quit the job, work, play the game 24-7, spend about, you know, like, um, umpteen hundreds of dollars uh, just to fork out this awesome warship. No. That's unacceptable. No. We ha the kids will love this shit. Uh, because they, they have all the free time in the world. Because they'll be able to play the game, maybe at least, you know, a good six to eight hours solidly per day. But I just don't see myself sitting here grinding all the way through the Puerto Rico nearly 24-7. I'll give you an example. The Ohio is a very good warship. And I grinded through the research center to the point it took me nine whole days, almost, thereabouts, that I got the warship. But there was, the reward itself was self-rewarding. And because of the fact that I was able to get it in nine days, I thought it was damn impressive. I thought it was actually um, a good outcome out of it. But, yeah, I just cannot see myself um, doing it any longer. So, yeah, I mean, I just cannot believe what I was seeing. And, um, you know what, um, people like Reddit, as well as other reviewers and whatnot, have shared the same view of what the Puerto Rico should have been. <coughs> they were very surprised and shocked and annoyed that, that the so-called apology was not good enough. And what they have done, uh, the changes of that, it's absolutely mind blowing. So, I've listened to I Chase's review video recently, uh, just before this one, uh, making my own. Um, he nailed it on the head, actually, pretty much. I mean, like, it was, it was a money grabbing warship to the point that aren't we supposed to be enjoying ourselves? That's what I got the gist of it, you know? Aren't we supposed to be enjoying ourselves? 
And he's not, he's not. I mean, like, I have to admit, I am very supportive of iChase. Um, also, you know, like, uh, Fl Flame You, Flame Bass, and Nodster. Um, and I looked at everyone's reviews that I've seen so far. And, you know what? I feel the same as them. Um, like, we're just another game on the game, on the playing field. But when it comes down to putting money, you know, value for money, um, and trying to understand what's worth or not, uh, I cannot, I cannot stress it more than enough, you know? And look at this, for example, you have to spend real life money again to get the balloons to actually, uh, you know, make it happen. Yes, I know there are other options like, you know, getting crates and containers and you may randomly get the balloons, but what are the chances of that happening every time? I'll give you features because it's basically, you know, not worth it. Um, Wargaming in general, I mean, like, it's it's great organization. They have a good, you know, mindset and things, you know, like how they put, you know, these ships together, and they do, they do have, like, a great um, passion of people out there who actually believe that this is awesome. So, you know what? Um, I'm just mind blown. <laughs> That's it. That's kind of blue. Um, yeah. Because, like, I'll show you an example that, you know, I find it pretty acceptable. So, in the premium store, you have some good deals going on. And I have to admit that the best deals I've seen so far um, actually are like the sound spec. Like for example, 20 mega crates for $90. Um, buying the ship and the flags and everything that comes with it for 75 bucks. okay? This one here is very, very busy um, being, um, you know, log containers. Um, a lot of everything that's like, that comes with it and you know as you look at it it looks pretty brilliant you know and the good thing about these sand effects is that the old tier warships are back again <laughs> so you know that's actually pretty awesome But yeah, so, so look at these packs for example, it's worth having. Yeah. I just cannot believe it. So, is the Puerto Rico worth getting? Hmm. I thought about it, and my answer is not really. But it is worth getting for a bundle ship, though. If you're willing to pay like a hundred to two hundred bucks for a bundle ship with flags and all the extra features that come with it, by all means, great. Uh, so to you from building it and from the dockyard. The dockyard method is actually pretty good. Um, it does take a while to build things and accumulate things, but you know, all honesty, I just don't see myself really, really grinding it all the way through just to get that chip. Um, leave a comment, let me know, tell me how you feel about it. I mean, um, I know how I feel about it as a player, as a player. player. Um, for a person who is probably working in wargaming right now, um, they're probably feeling the pain 
the strength from the community about how they feel about it. And I feel for them. But you know what? Honestly, I mean, like, this is a joke for a tier 10 warship, guys. Tier 10 is supposed to be, um, say, easily about 150 bucks, for example, with um, everything that they have on the ship, as well as the camouflage and the captain, at least the 5 point captain, and, or 15 point, and get them into battle. So, yeah, don't know what to say. I really have mixed feelings. But I'll tell you what, I mean, I will give it some thought again and talk about it later, but, wow, Wargaming needs to listen to its customers. Wargaming needs to um, reflect upon the decisions they made. And also try and you know make the changes for us. I'm not sure what to say, I'm just still coming to terms with it. So guys, I'm just going to say that, um, yeah, if you have any thoughts or whatnot, tell, tell me more later on. I'll be very curious to hear from you, to see what your thoughts are. Um, in the meantime, try and have a good Christmas and New Year. I understand it's not too far away, so try and enjoy yourselves. Alright guys, have fun. <laughs>